1761, the United States was not yet a country. At that time, Great Britain's King George ruled the 13 colonies of America. Sybil's family lived in the colony of New York in a town called Fredericksburg. Sybil had a large family. Okay. Now, one of the things we're really going to be looking at is the setting of our story, okay? Colonial families worked hard. Most families lived on farms and raised their own food. People worked in the fields, operated mills, or made tools and other items that people needed. Families cooked food over an open fire and made things that their families used, such as candles and soap. New York was one of 13 British colonies along the Atlantic coast. Atlantic Ocean, New York. Okay, so those are the original 13 colonies. Parents in the American colonies expected their children to help around the house. Sybil and other girls her age would help their mothers with cooking, mending clothes, and caring for their younger brothers and sisters. Sybil also had a very important job caring for her horse, Star. She had to make sure that Star got enough food, water, and exercise. Sybil took care of her horse, Star. When there was time for fun, the children played games such as tag or hide and seek. An outdoor bowling game called Nine Pins was popular too. When it was cold outside, people played indoor games like dominoes, marbles, and checkers. Okay, so boys and girls, what details tell where and when the events in Sybil's life took place? So where are the events in Sybil's life taking place? Kelsey. On a farm, where else are the events taking place? Teddy? Um, in a house and in maybe a little pasture for a horse. Okay, where else? So, so far we have they're taking place on a farm, in a house. Where else? Juliana? In a stable. In a stable, Logan? Outside, yes. In New York and Fredericksburg. In New York and Frederick, Fredericksburg. Are we having a time period maybe? Do we know what year the story is taking place? Because is it taking place now? Yanni, when is it taking place? In uh, 1761. In 1761. So that is an important thing to think about. This story is taking place in 1761. Sybil's father, living in the American colonies in the 1760s, was both exciting and scary. Many colonists thought that the British were not treating them fairly. These people, known as patriots, believed that the colonies should become a country, free from British rule. They wanted to make their own decisions. Sybil's father, Colonel Henry Ludington, was a patriot. He had fought in the French and Indian War and was earning money by running a mill where he made flour out of grain. Some of his flour was used to make bread for the patriots who had begun to fight the British. Sybil knew that her father sometimes hid patriots from the British. Sybil had taken food and blankets to the men hiding in her father's barn. She wanted to help her father free the colonies from British rule. Sybil helped her father by bringing blankets to the patriots he hid in the barn. Okay, so what problem did the colonists have? What problem did the colonists have? Yes, Ivy. Okay, they wanted to take over the Patriots. What else? What else could we say? Anybody else have anything they want to add to that? No? Colonel Ludington was in charge of the army in the area where he lived. The army was made up of volunteer soldiers who returned to their farms and families when they weren't fighting. The volunteers were called Minutemen because they could be ready to fight with a minute's notice. Members of the Patriot Army were volunteers who sometimes wore their own clothing.
The British soldiers were known as redcoats because their clothing was bright red. The Patriots wore blue, but sometimes they wore their own clothing, like hunting shirts. Members of the Patriot Army were not as well dressed as the redcoats, but they were ready to fight. The Patriots gathered for training in a field which was near the Ludington's home. They wanted to defend their homes, while the redcoats did not have the same interest in the war. Fire in Danbury. On the evening of April 26, 1777, someone on a horse came into the Ludington's yard with a message. He carried the news that the British were burning the nearby town of Danbury. When Sybil looked outside, she could hardly believe what she saw. The sky was red with flames. The British had a plan to quickly end the war by burning the supplies that the Patriots had stored in the area. They believed that an army without food and gunpowder would have to give up. Colonel Ludington knew that the British would try to destroy other supplies if the Patriots didn't stop them. He also knew that it would take General Washington's troops at least two days to reach Danbury. Colonel Ludington needed to stop the British right away. Oh, so what's the problem now? What problem is happening now? Elisa. Not Washington's houses. Where are they? Yanni, where are they? Do you know where they are, Logan? Ludington. Not Ludington. Avery? Yeah, they're in Danbury. They're in Danbury. And how far away is um, General Washington's troops? Clark? Two days away. Two days away. They're two days away. Okay, can we get a picture of the Statue of Liberty? Sure. Do you need the student to go stand by that? Yeah, just a couple. Of you can get okay. Who is done with their Statue of Liberty? Ivy is done. Why don't you go into the hallway? And um, who else is done? We'll get a girl and a boy. And Clark is done. Let him go. His mask is, is fitting a little better today. Okay, so. Sybil's Ride. People in nearby villages had to be warned that the Redcoats were coming so that the Patriots could be prepared to fight. But who would carry the message? The man who had brought the message to them was too exhausted to continue on. Colonel Ludington had to stay at the farm to organize the soldiers as they arrived. to each other were they like jumping in their jeep and telling and carrying the messages or was there another way that they carried messages to each other Ethan no yes they had to like walk and walk or like ride their horse they had to walk or ride their horse and knock on the door and give it to them yes they, they couldn't send an email Right? There were no, there was an email or, could they call their friends? Could they send a text message? No. Yanni? No. Uh, no. Uh, yes. They couldn't send it, they couldn't tweet it out. Sybil said that she would spread the news to other villages and farms, even though she knew that the trip was dangerous. Both armies needed horses, so soldiers were robbing travelers on the road. What would happen if she met redcoats along the way? Because the messenger was tired, Sybil offered to spread the news that the redcoats were coming. Oh my goodness. Now, why did Sybil offer to spread the news? Jensen? Because why? She had a horse and she likes to... Is that why? Because she had a horse? 
Is that why you think she did it? Libby? So people don't get their horses stolen? What do you think, Teddy? But why did Sybil in particular, so why did Sybil volunteer? Juliana? Because the messenger was tired. Because the messenger was tired, right? And the messenger was tired. And her father has to what? Her father has to stay at the farm. So she offered to do it. She's so brave. Isn't Sybil brave? That isn't the general thing that girls did back then. Sybil's parents were afraid of the dangers that their daughter would face, but they knew that at the age of 16, Sybil could ride better than anyone in the village, and she could find the home of every soldier. Her parents finally agreed to let her go. Sybil found a warm coat, put a saddle on Star, and rode her horse into the darkness. Sybil rode to every farm and village in the area. From the back of her horse, she banged on doors with a big stick, waking up the sleeping people inside. Danbury is burning! Gather at the Luddington's home, she cried. Sybil returned home early the next morning, exhausted from yelling her message to so many people. She had traveled nearly 40 miles warning the townspeople. This was farther than Paul Revere, a more famous rider, had traveled with his message about the Redcoats in 1775. Interesting. So she traveled farther than Paul Revere did with his message. Yes. Okay, well then just look up here, okay? Sybil Luddington rode nearly 40 miles to spread the message of the British attack. Key. The beginning and end of Sybil's ride. Places Sybil stopped. Route Sybil rode. North, East, South, West, Luddington Home, Pecksville, Stormville, Farmers Mills, Reading Corners, Kent Cliffs, Mahopic Mines, Mahopic Falls, Mahopic, Carmel, Lake Carmel. So she went really far. How many miles did Sybil travel that night? Ethan? 40 miles. 40 miles on her horse. That's a lot of ground to cover. And so, how do the illustrations help you understand the setting and how it affected the events? How does that illustration help you understand? Teddy? Well, there wouldn't have been a tsunami, probably, because no, there isn't like um, an ocean where she was. So whatever would happen? Is she riding at night? Yes. She's riding through a forested area. Forced back then, and forests today can be dangerous as well. There's wild animals in those in the forest. She could have been attacked by a bear. The forest boys and girls back then, forests were full of very dangerous animals. So she could have been attacked by an animal. There's obviously red coats around. They could have caught her. She could have been captured. So it, it was very dangerous. So the setting of the story, so the setting her ride was a very dangerous ride. So what would her, would, it, would her task have been easier if it was modern times? If she lived now, how would her task have been easier? What could Sybil have done? Thomas? She could have just texted people. She could have just texted people. Yes. She could have like, if she 
She could have driven a car. If she's 16, she could drive a car, yes. Call him on a phone. Clark? Go through the forest easier. Go through the forest easier. Juliana? She could have what? She could have done instant messenger, right? So it would have been so much easier. Sybil went to sleep as the Patriots marched toward Ridgefield. Sybil's courage and desire to help America become free became known throughout the colonies. Later, General George Washington came to visit Sybil. He had heard of her midnight ride and wanted to thank her for helping the Patriot Army. Another famous Patriot, Alexander Hamilton, wrote Sybil a letter of thanks. On October 19, 1781, the Patriots finally won the war. The United States of America became a nation. General Washington thanked Sybil for her brave actions. Okay, so now how, what problem did Sybil solve for the colonists? What big problem did she solve? Do you know what problem she solved? Jensen, what problem did she solve? She solved the problem of the burning of Danbury. Of Danbury, because there were supplies at Danbury. So she stopped that and by them she stopped the redcoats from burning homes and towns and how was the colonist problem finally solved what happened yes they won the war that's right they won the war they won the war Painting of it or a picture of it. After the war, after the war ended, Sybil married Edmund Ogden, someone she had known as a child. Sybil's mother was only 15 when Sybil was born, but Sybil didn't get married until she was 23. Sybil and her husband had one son named Henry. Sybil's husband died several years later. Although few women worked outside the home in colonial times, Sybil knew she needed to earn money to take care of herself and her son. Using the same bravery that she had shown on her midnight ride, Sybil opened a restaurant in Catskill, New York. After Henry got married, Sybil moved with him and his wife to Unadilla, New York, where she lived until she died at the age of 77. Remembering Sybil, a bronze statue of Sybil Ludington stands in Carmel, New York to honor her brave ride. Her hometown of Fredericksburg is now called Ludingtonville in memory of Sybil's love of freedom. For a long time, only a few people remembered Sybil's midnight ride. Then, in 1976, the United States Post Office created a stamp honoring Sybil for America's 200th birthday. The stamp was one of a set created to honor people who helped America win its freedom during the Revolutionary War. Now, many people know about the brave midnight ride of Sybil Ludington. An artist created this woodcut to remind everyone of Sybil's brave ride. So she has a statue. So a sculptor carved her statue of her. Now let's look. Now there's an index in the back of the book. This is a text feature. And so if you wanted to know about Colonel Ludington, we could see what pages he's mentioned on. He's on 6, 11, and 12. Colonies are on those pages. Danbury is on those pages. If we wanted to see mentions of Patriots, we could look on pages 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, and 18. Red posts are on pages 9, 12, and 13, and 16. The Revolutionary War is mentioned on page 22. And Star, the horse, is on pages 4 and 14. That's what we could use the index for boys and girls. Now you will reread this story tonight for homework. You will take your iPads home. Those of you who are having problems with it, I will try and I will assign it to you through um, the book, through my book, okay? Please don't 
Mangle my book. Thank you.